Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to uh, see my webinar. Um, in this webinar, I'm going to be teaching you how to uh, create vehicle graphics and vehicle wraps using CrawlDraw X7. Um, I want to start off by taking a look at a, a project that we do quite a bit here in house uh, at our sign shop. And that's uh, semi truck lettering. Um, now I know this isn't a wrap, but uh, these are a little more common here. And I'm going to work my way to uh, doing a wrap project um, towards the middle part of this this webinar. But I want to start with a project like this because um, I can show you a few little uh, tips and tricks that uh, you can also use when designing wraps. Um, a lot of times what we do is we start off with a logo um, and uh, in this case we created a logo for uh, uh, a farm uh, that's nearby. Uh, we're located in central Illinois so um, we went through the regular logo design process and uh, we ended up with this. Now I'm not going to be walking you through how to design logos. I've done other webinars in the past that uh, if you want to take a look at those they're on the Krell Draws uh, YouTube channel, and uh, you can take a look at those. And if you want to uh, see some of my um, tutorials and webinars on on that type of stuff, um, so I'll be skipping over a lot of that part of the process and just you know pretending that the the logo is already created and um, you know uh, adding it to the the rest of the design. So to start. We've got this logo here, um, and then the first thing I do is uh, I go out uh, and take a photo of the vehicle. Now I'm going to be also throughout this webinar showing different ways of using vehicle templates, um, photos, um, and a couple different methods of uh, taking the, the actual shape and image of the vehicle and uh, designing over top of it. So in this case we're going to use a photo, which is uh, what we like to do when we're doing work in-house here. Um, so the first thing I do is I go to File, Import, and then I track down the photo that I took. It's in here somewhere. There it is, okay. Um, then I click here, and now we've got our photo. So the first thing I like to do is select this photo and then go up to Bitmap Image Adjustment Lab. And there's a, a bunch of really cool, useful tools in here. Um, the first one being this uh, Select White Point. If you, uh, since the vehicle is white, uh, I like to use that. So I do this, and then I click on a part that uh, you know is a white part of the vehicle, and I click on that, and then it does its thing. And there you go. Now it's this is pure white. Um, it takes away the shadow that's, you know, in a natural photo. Um, but for designing purposes, it's nice to have that white background. Now I could go in and kind of uh, adjust the brightness and the contrast a little bit if I need a little more definition of my uh, on my vehicle, so that you know I can see where the truck ends and the building back here begins, but. For sketch purposes, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this isn't going in a magazine. It's just to help us do the job. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And uh, we'll do its thing here. It's kind of a big photo. We like to use uh, high resolution photos on a lot of stuff. So um, probably don't need to for this particular project, but um, uh, we did. So. Uh, then the next thing I do is uh, when I'm out taking a photo of this vehicle, we you know we usually have a work order with us, and I'll start taking measurements and writing down measurements. Um, and in this particular case, uh, I made I don't, really all I need is uh, one kind of horizontal measurement, and the bigger I can get it, the the better. Um, in this case, the bulk of the work is going to be kind of on this door, so I measured from. Uh, this seam here to this seam here and it was about 34 and a quarter inch so this is kind of a quick way that I I scale out my photos um, I create a rectangle from seam to seam 
And then what I do is I type in the real measurement up here that it's going to be, so 35 or 34.25. Now what that did is that you know blew up that rectangle to a pretty large size. Um, but the, the important thing to keep in mind is you see how that percentage changed? So what I like to do is copy that. So control C. Um, now I select the photo. Now the photo is going to drop that percentage back down to 100% because I haven't scaled it or anything like that yet. So you can see when I scale it up, that percentage changes. So what I want to do is select this and then paste it, control V, and then go ahead and hit enter. And you want to make sure that this uh, lock ratio is checked on um, so that it doesn't, you know, stretch it out real wide and keep it, you know, the same height. So I'm going to hit OK. And you can see it automatically change this here too. And so here's my shape, 34.25. And as you can see, it matches up with the door. And so now that photo is to scale. Um, back behind here, you'll see I still have my logo. So I'm going to go ahead and select that logo back there. And I'm going to hold down the shift button and hit page up. And that brings whatever I have selected to the very front of, you know, my design. Um, you know, the other way you could do it is you could go to uh, um, object uh, order, and then you've got those those uh, things here, um, and then you can also pull that up over in your 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 Docker. But I, I just like to use page up and page down. Uh, we'll move things forward and back a layer and shift page up will move things to the very front of the design and shift page down will send it all the way to the back. Uh, so it's just a quick little uh, shortcut uh, that I, I like to use. So for this design, uh, and one thing I'm going to really stress when doing this is you got to kind of be mindful of what, you know, part elements of the vehicle. Um, and then also your space. You don't want to crowd the edges of your design. You don't want to make things too large. So what I like to do is kind of, um, you know, keeping in mind that the mirror uh, molding piece is there. And you've got a door handle here. I want to make it just so. Um, now I'll show you a little later on, but on, on the flip side of this truck, on the uh, passenger side of a lot of these semis, there's a, a peep window. It's like a a uh, window about right here and it it's so that the truck driver can um, see uh, you know over there and uh, so your design obviously has to change uh, to make room for that and usually that means your your logo is going to be pretty small but there's not a whole lot you can do about it and um, you know it, it works in the in the end and I, I don't like to have this side match that side because it looks awkward to have it you know, when that window's not there, you know, to have just such a small logo here. So um, it's okay to have both sides not match 100%. So we've got our design located about where we want it. Um, then the next thing is to kind of come up with graphics. And uh, what I like to do is kind of follow the shape of the vehicle. And so I would take this uh, freehand tool and uh, I'll click once and let go and then pull out. So I'm not holding the mouse button down at this point. I'm just uh, letting the freehand tool do its thing. Uh, then I'm going to click again and end that line. So we have a straight line here. And now using the uh, shape tool, I'm going to right click on it and do to curve. And you can do that same thing up here, too. You can just click on that icon. I just like right-clicking on things. Um, and then we grab somewhere in here, and we'll uh, pull this line and kind of make a nice curve. And what I might do in this case is I'm going to add a node here. And to add a node, you just simply, you know, here again, using your shape tool, um, just click once and then double-click. Um, and that adds a node. And now I'm going to take this part back here and I'm going to uh, convert it to a line. 
because I want this to be straight back here. And I'm going to move this node down a little bit. You can move your nodes by selecting on them and, you know, clicking and dragging them, or you can uh, select the node and then use your, your arrow keys on your, on your keyboard to kind of slowly move it. So that's what I did there. So we've got kind of a nice shape to start with. Uh, now going back to my freehand tool, uh, I am going to uh, select it again. Uh, and now when you have your freehand tool and you already have a line selected, um, you're actually able to, uh, once you get towards the, the beginning node or the end node, you'll notice that your cursor changes and it kind of gives you a little uh, symbol that allow, allows you to know that you're, you know, when you click on it now, it's going to connect to that node. So I'm going to connect to the node. And I'm going to bring that back to about here. And then I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to bring this back to here. I'm going to straighten all this out here. So then I'll go back to my shape tool again. So I, I alternate. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll, you know, create, uh, rough out my shape is what I like to call it. And I just create shapes and get kind of in the ballpark. And then I go into my, uh, my shape tool and actually manipulate it further. Um, I see a lot of people use the Bezier tool and that, that's a good tool to use too. Um, but because I use a combination of straight lines and curves, uh, I like to use the freehand tool and then switch over to the, uh, the shape tool. Um, and you know, you can use your shortcut keys to F10 to kind of go to there. Um, and then, uh, obviously F5 to, to pull up your freehand tool. Um, but, uh, that's, that's what I like to use to, uh, uh, create these shapes. So I'm going to right click on this due to curve. And if you click on a node, you've got these handles here that you can adjust and get it just the way you want it. I'm pretty picky about getting my curves just right. Um, I want to show you one thing here too. Uh, so I can move this node so that it's kind of parallel with this line here, or I can go up here and uh, select smooth node and it does it automatically. Um, so if this line wasn't 100% straight, uh, I might use that, that, uh, that smooth node feature. So now we've got a, a graphic like that. And then uh, there's this kind of notch here. Here again, I'm working with the shapes of the vehicle. And this notch is on the other side of the truck, too. Um, so I might do a, a line like that. And let's bring it way up here. And I'll bring this over here. And I'll go back to my um, shape tool. And this time I'm going to select everything and do convert to curve because I got multiple curves I'll be working with here. And then I don't have to right click on each line segment. Um, now I can pull this like that. Nope, I don't need to right click. I already did that. And maybe something like that. Now if I want to fine tune this curve a little bit more, I can add an extra node to kind of help with that. And sometimes what I like to do is to kind of really uh, make a curve perfect is, uh, you know, I started with this node, but then I'll go and I'll do a node on either side and delete that node. And it kind of fixes it just a little bit. I know it doesn't seem like much to the average person, but um, those little those little adjustments really help kind of make it just right. Um, So there's more I can do to this, but just for the time being, uh, now I could start adding some color and some contours and things like that. So uh, let's make this a red. And I can select red from my logo by using the, uh, the, the eyedropper tool. So I'm going to select that. And I'm going to pick 
you know, a shade of red in here. Let's go with the uh, the real dark red. Oops. There we go. And then I can come back in with uh, my shape tool or my freehand tool again, and uh, we're gonna add a highlight to this. Might be kind of hard to see the the black line on the red curve there or the red background but um, you could there we go um, you also notice now there's a couple different ways we can we can do this next part uh, one way is to simply just kind of complete the shape so if you have like a if you have a line like this, now if I were to apply fill to this, it won't fill anything because, well, it's not a closed shape. It shows that it has fill, um, but being that it's not a complete shape, there's not, you know, it, it won't actually show it. So what, as soon as you comp complete that shape or close the shape, it'll, it'll give it its fill. Um, and so that's kind of what we want to do in this particular case is close that shape and then you can select this shape up here and this shape and use the intersect tool and now we've created a a new shape that we can give any color we want so we can make it a, a bright red in this case kind of look like a highlight um the other thing you can do so i'm going to back up i'm going to hit Control z which is undo and back up a bunch so before I close that shape, I just have this line going from here to here. Um, there's a handy tool in Corel Draw. Uh, you know, I've got my monitor set at kind of a low setting to record this. Uh, usually it's it's under these tools down here, but uh, you can actually click on this arrow here and it will show it. Um, so that's the Smart Fill tool. And so I select that. And with the Smart Fill tool um, selected, I can actually click right here where I want my new shape to be and it kind of automatically does what that intersect feature did. So the way the smart tool works here again just to kind of briefly show you on the building up here I could, I could create several line segments here and then with the smart fill tool you can click in here and there you go. You got yourself a new shape. So pretty cool tool. Uh, works good for things like what I just did, creating a little highlight. Um, now I can take the color from the uh, the lighter part of the logo and apply it there. And so I kind of work, uh, you know, add some contours. Uh, I'll do a contour real quick just to show you. Um, here's your contour tool. Uh, now there you can, it's it's like add an outline, but the nice thing about it is it creates a vector shape that is uh, behind the, the shape that you're, you know, so this gray shape is actually created behind this dark red shape. Um, so it's different than an outline, whereas an outline is just, uh, well, first of all, it's not vector at first until you convert it to curves. So there's an extra step involved there but it's it's also uh you'd have to break it apart and uh weld it together so i like i like using a contour tool uh as an alternative to making outlines so you can break a contour group apart if you're happy with the way it looks or you can keep it on there it's kind of up to you um and so let's get rid of my outlines and kind of we got a start of a graphic and I'm going to actually switch over to the, the actual file. And so this is kind of what I ended up with. So I created this graphic here, up here. We've got our logo. We even got graphics here. Um, a lot of these uh, 
these truck drivers, um, well, by law, they have to have certain things on their vehicle if they're hauling um, certain items. So, uh, and we do a lot of semi trucks in our area. We're kind of uh, in an agricultural um, agricultural uh, area. Um, lots of farmers, lots of truckers. Um, so we get a lot of that business because they're required by law to have certain things on their vehicles. And then they come in and they want to do kind of extra stuff like the graphics and the pinstriping. Um, so that's kind of what we ended up with. And now here's the other side. You could see that peep window I was telling you about earlier um, and how we had to make the logo quite a bit smaller. Uh, this is a day cab truck. So some of the trucks with the sleepers on the back uh, have room to make the logo a lot bigger uh, if our clients want it that way so we can do that um and then we kind of designed a, a hood graphic which we don't get a lot of people asking for that because not a lot of people can see it <laughs> it's so high up but um you know the truck drivers can i guess uh then when it's all said and done what we like to do is we take all the graphics and so in this case we would duplicate this control d and uh you know, we take the elements and we kind of keep certain things together and we move them around and rotate them a little bit. Uh, and the goal here is our printer has only so much, only a certain width that we can print with. So what we do is we like to um, kind of nest all of our graphics within Corel Draw um, as opposed to using our RIP software to do it because we can get a little bit trickier with our um, you know, uh, nesting objects together than we can in a, a RIP software, which tries to do it automatically and it can't really get things quite as tight. So at the end of the day, we're using this amount of uh, print material um, and uh, all this lime green is actually a, a cut contour. Um, and to explain that, the best way I can explain that is, uh, so we would take a shape like this, let's say. Um, I would then take an internal contour. And let's make it a different color so we can see what we're doing. So, you know, we might make that 0.15 inch internal contour. Then I break that apart. I get rid of the fill. And then we've got a special color here called uh, Cut Contour. Uh, and you actually have to go into your settings and, and label the color that way. And now when you, uh, when you right click on that color, it's going to apply that color to the, the outline of the shape. Whereas if you were to left click on it, uh, it would do the fill. And we don't want to do the fill, we just want to tell the RIP software to cut this line. And so that's where that cut contour color comes into play. And so we've essentially done that. I do that after I get it all laid out like this. And uh, then we can send it to our printer and create it. So that's kind of a typical project that comes into the shop here, but I also do a lot of design work for businesses all over the country and in some cases the world. And uh, they'll hire me to to design uh, a wrap, and so wrap is a little bit has a little bit more to it. Um, we don't do a lot of semi wraps because <laughs> it's, it's a lot of material and a lot of labor. Um, and uh, I'm sure there's there's semi wraps out there, but they're kind of rare. Um, so we go over to uh, this file here. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, this project here. Uh, so this is a, a wrap for a locksmith company. And uh, I'm going to walk you through how I did this project. So to start, I like to do a, a template or a design like this where I've got you know both sides, my back, and my front. And uh, I didn't have the luxury of having uh, straight on photos of this vehicle. But luckily, Corel Draw has uh, a lot of great artwork that uh, you can get with uh, Corel Connect. Um, and so the best way to do that is you, uh, you go up to at your application launcher, which is up here. 
and you select this arrow and you can see that there's Corel Connect here. So we're going to click on that. That's going to open Corel Connect. And so in my case, what I did is I'll search for van. So you type in van and then you'd hit your search button and you know, it was kind of already there, but uh, just to show you. Um, then we scroll down and here we got some of these vehicle line art stuff to work from. Uh, so we're looking for a Chevy van. Um, here's a cool thing to keep in mind. You can actually increase the size of your, your thumbnails, which is helpful when you're looking for this type of artwork. There we go. Okay, so these are the vans I want. Here's our guy. We're going to select that. Um, now you can move it to your tray. Just click and drag it down to your tray. Uh, and then you can just minimize or, or close out of your connect. I'm just going to minimize it. Um, now once you're back in Corel Draw, you'll notice you have your tray down here. And you can double click on this. Or just single click, I guess. And uh, it's going to show your tray. Um, so you can load up a bunch of clip art into the your tray within Connect, and then it will it will be in here when you're in Draw. And then you can just click and drag it into your your file, like so. So, and when you want to when you want to slide your tray away, you just hit that button here, and there you go. So I'll start with uh, a template like this. Um, and then what I like to do is ungroup it all. And then I take, usually there's one shape behind everything that you can kind of select and you can give it color and to, just to see how it works. Um, so I'll select that. And then I'll hold down my shift key and select the rest of the van and hit group. And so now I've got this as a group and then this as just a standalone shape. I'm going to be doing a lot of my work with the standalone shape. Um, so in this case, what, what I did was I started with a, a logo. So this is our logo here that we created. And I'm going to uh, cut that or copy it, um, however you want to do it. Um, then I like to uh, just uh, take my pick tool here, right click on this and uh, do frame type, uh, create empty power clip frame. And so that created that X there. And so now this is a, an actual power clipped frame. And what you can do is you can select that shape now and you can hold your control key down and it actually takes you within the power clip and it's going to gray out everything else on the page. I can't select anything here. All I'm doing is focusing on stuff inside this container, this frame. Now I'm going to uh, right click and hit paste and bring my logo that I copied in here. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a background sheet because at the end of the day, the reason why I like to do it this way is I'm creating a sheet that I can run through the printer. Um, and then when I want to actually see how it looks on a sketch, I would go outside of my power clip. So to give you an example, we're going to take this color here, apply it to this. So this is our sheet. If you wanted to just do a big purple wrap, <laughs> you could. Um, this is what you'd send to the printer. This is how it looks in the sketch. So here again, I hold down control key and click on that shape and click on it a second time. And now I'm within this power clip. So that's how that works. Um, now in this case, I like to work with the, uh, the body lines of the vehicle. Uh, in this case, I want to create, um, I want to create a line that kind of goes all the way through here. And uh, we want to do maybe another one that goes all the way through here. Uh, we'll make 
those the same size. I'm going to duplicate this one. Delete that guy. Create another rectangle there. Move my fill back up there. Um, then I'm going to take this same color here. I'm going to apply it to this shape. And I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Now, what you can do is you can, this is kind of a cool trick, you can hold down your control key and then go up to any other color here. In this case, I want to darken it, so I'm going to add a little bit of black to it. Here again, holding down the control key and left clicking on the color that I want to mix into that purple that I already added. And you can see it kind of darkens it a little bit. Then I want to uh, maybe add a lighter color here. It might be a little too light. I can darken it or add a little bit of blue maybe. And a little bit of black. Here again, I'm holding the control key down and just adding. I think it adds like 10% uh, of whatever color you're clicking on. So that looks good. I like the way that looks. I'm going to use my color eyedropper tool. And uh, we'll apply it to this shape up here. Whoops. Get rid of our outlines, keep it nice and crisp. And now we've got that body line running through the, the truck, similar to what I did here colors are a little different on here but um, now I'll hold down the control key go back in there and uh, I am going to select the the actual uh, icon part of the logo I'm going to duplicate that bring it down kind of place it in a good spot. Now with some of these wraps, it's okay to kind of go beyond, you know, um, I want this to be kind of a super graphic and, you know, you could even go really big with it if you wanted to, but uh, I felt like this is probably just, just right like that. Um, then you can duplicate your logo. Here again, taking a, a logo design that's already been created. All we're doing is, so I'm going to send that to the front order or shift page up if you want to do it that way too. Just a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, in front of, I know you can select that. Shift page up. And then when you're done, you know, you kind of work your way around it and uh, you get something like that. Now, what I like to do for sketch purposes is these outlines are really dark. So I actually go in and I make them transparent. Uh, I use a transparency tool and then I go to uh, your uniform transparency and then, you know, I bring it down to a, a smaller percentage. So the lines are still there. Um, but they're allowing some of this color to shine through and um, they're not so distracting. And you end up with something more like this. You can see those lines aren't too intense. And I actually go in and, uh, you know, mess with the, the fill on uh, some of these. You know, I don't like the tires being light gray like that. They're usually darker. So um, you don't have to do that for sketches. But if you're showing a client and you kind of want them to... Uh, um, be impressed with the final product and you're trying to, you know, sell a certain thing, that little bit of extra work can sometimes help. Um, and you can see I kind of added a contour around uh, the icon shape. 
and uh, this purple ended up being a little bit lighter than what I had here, but that's the basic process. So if I were to go into here, hold down my control key, um, you know, you're able to see, uh, you know, the elements that were used to make to make that wrap design. Uh, and then when I actually send the artwork to the printer, uh, I wouldn't send them all this. I would, you know, send them just that, just this uh, here. This is all they get. And then they would uh, also get a sketch along with that so they know how to line it up on the vehicle. And um, uh, you get a final product like this. Um, now, this isn't a real wrap. Uh, I mean, it, it ended up being a real wrap, but right now this is, uh, this is just a photo. Um, and I added that there, and I'll show you how to do that next. Um, but before I do that, one thing I want to, to uh, explain is when you're designing a wrap, uh, sometimes you see a lot of people that are new to designing um, this type of project. They like to kind of throw everything they can at a at a wrap design. It gets a little busy and bogged down. Now we could have added a bunch of texture to this, um, but I feel like if there's a there's a way to do that and there's a way not to do that. You don't want your texture to be louder and the focal point of the design. It it can't compete with the important elements, which is the brand. This whole wrap is about brand recognition. It's about getting the name out there, um, somewhat about advertising the website. You know, this is kind of important too, but it's mainly just getting this thing ingrained in people's minds. When they see this, they're like, okay, I saw those guys yesterday. They're the locksmith company. And then eventually the name sinks in and people remember the name. And when, when they need help, when they need to get into their house, and they remember that professional looking truck that drove by, that's who they call. And so you'll see people put phone numbers on vehicles and, you know, there's a big debate on whether or not that's necessary. Um, I feel like uh, if you can advertise a website, something that's easier to remember, um, that might be the way to go. And it kind of depends on the industry too. Uh, if if you're the type of business where people are going to be jotting down your phone number off of your vehicle, then by all means. But um, a lot of a lot of businesses having a phone number on their vehicle is kind of unnecessary because people simply can't remember the phone number. And uh, what it does is it competes with all the other elements, and people aren't remembering your name because there's this big phone number on here, or there's a laundry list of services, or there's just too much information. So you have to be really careful about what information you put on a vehicle. And when you have a lot of information, then it's your job as a designer to play favorites. So you want your logo to be really big. This 24-hour service is important, but it doesn't need to really be the focal point. So it's in the back, kind of smaller. Um, one one little trick I'll show you, uh, kind of a little little tip uh, for you. If you have a client that wants a laundry list of services, but you're afraid that it's going to compete with all the other elements, and it's you you feel like it's not as you know as a design professional, you feel like it's not. Um, really important, but at the same time, you want to please your client. One thing you can do um, is write your laundry list. So, I'll just leave it at that and then so let's add about two spaces in between our dash here okay and I'm going to select all this and I'm just going to uh, go to case change case and make it all uppercase and you can pick a fancier font than Arial but just for this the sake of this demonstration I'm going to keep it like that 
Um, and I like to make these little black circles, which will end up being a different color. When it's all said and done, just to kind of have a little more character than those normal dashes. And then I take the whole thing and I weld it together. And I make it kind of small. Actually, let me add one more dot. Whoops. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to line it up with that, bring it over here. And we can use our align and distribute to kind of center things up. Um, I'm going to duplicate it again and stagger it a little bit and then hit duplicate again. And so now I've created this kind of texture here that I can put back here and hit save page down or shift page down. And you know, you could uh, fill it in here too. This looks like it needs it here. And so when I go back into here, you can see there's kind of a texture there. That's a laundry list of services. And you, you may want to make this smaller so people can read the entire thing. Um, and it doesn't necessarily work for this design. And you know, you could try a different color that would probably look a little nicer than this, but it's just an idea. It's a, it's a way to get that laundry list, make the customer happy but at the same time uh, not create something that's distracting and uh, fighting with the more important elements of the design. Um, okay, so I promised I'd show you how to do this part. Um, so what I do is I start with a photo of this vehicle and you know, you'll have a front and a back and you can get, a lot of times you can get photos from dealerships or from, uh, you know, Chevrolet's got these photos for promotional purposes. Um, uh, or you could go out and take photos yourself and take a really nice professional photo. Um, and there's sites like iStock Photo and uh, you know a bunch of those um, stock photo websites that you can use. Um, but what I did is I started with that photo and then I created this vector shape. Um, here again, using the shape tool or the freehand tool. You know, I kind of went around and I traced this out. Now, there's other tools like uh, Photo Paint has a, a great tool for it's called the Cutout Lab for cropping things out. But I really want a vector shape um, so that I can use my power clip feature. Um, let me undo here. There we go. And I'll show you why. So I start with this this photo and this black shape that I've created, and now I've got this design here. I'm going to duplicate or copy this design. Um, or actually, I'm going to duplicate it. Let's duplicate it. I'm going to right click on it and go Power Clip inside, and using this arrow, select the shape here. So it puts it in there, and that's not what we want at all. So we're going to hold down the Control key and go inside of our Power Clip. And we're going to take this design here. Uh, and really all we want is this part of it. So we can delete this. We don't need that. And we don't need the front because we can't see the front. At least not on this angle. 
and get rid of my laundry list. Go back in here and uh, I'll keep it. Why the heck not? Um, now what I'll do is place it here. And then I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to uh, extract contents. Get rid of this up here. And then group all this again. Actually, we really do need to get rid of this laundry list. It's going to be harder to work with. So I'm going to get rid of that. I should have grouped all that together. There we go. All right. Now we got grouped. OK. Um, now I go up to Effects, Add Perspective. Now, while I'm doing that, um, all I'm doing is I'm grabbing these nodes, and you can kind of see that uh, you can sort of move this away just, just the way you want it. Um, but while I'm doing that, I also want to explain that the reason why I extracted the power clip, the elements out of the power clip, is because if they were still power clipped, just to give you an example, let's take this that's still power clipped here. We'll duplicate that. Um, so this isn't power clip, this is. And I want to point this out because uh, this will save you from making a mistake. Uh, if I go to effects, add perspective, I'm changing the shape of the vehicle, but the things that are power clipped in there aren't, aren't conforming to my perspective that I'm trying to change. Uh, so you have to extract the contents from the power clip. Uh, so you go extract the contents. And then you can uh, group this together again. And uh, we can bring this over here and do the same uh, add perspective effect. I gotta kind of work with it and get it just right. Um, I won't bore you with all the the uh, kind of tweaking that goes into this, but uh, eventually you'll get it the way you want it. Now you'll notice that the we still have that black X back there uh, showing that this is still a uh, power clipped frame. Um, to get rid of that, it's pretty easy. You just right click on your um, well, you might want to ungroup it first, uh, but then right click on your your power clipped frame and go to frame type and hit none. And so that gets it back to where we were before. Uh, so ungroup our objects, right click on that, frame type, none. And so what I'd probably do for sketch purposes is um, weld it together. worrying about a sketch here so uh, we can kind of manipulate things in a certain way that you probably wouldn't want to if it you know they they're not going to see all this stuff down here so this isn't really important um, but uh, you would want to if you want to manipulate a shape after you've been dealing with the perspective and it's still giving you these you go to the shape tool and it's still giving you these perspective commands um, simply right click on the shape and do convert to curves and now you're back to um, you know dealing with the regular shape um, so I could extend this out like that and uh, you know you probably would want to get this just right so you got to kind of play with it um, you know welding these shapes together and then curving that uh, just slightly curving it and you know, getting this just right. Um, you know, the more you play with it, the better it will look. Uh, and so you can see we're not doing too bad here. This is looks like it's going downhill, but uh, for the most part, we're we're looking pretty good. Now you'll notice that this also uh, this finalized version has a lot of uh, 
lines, you know, has shown the lines of the vehicle and the highlights and things like that. And it looks a little bit more realistic than this does. This looks real flat. Uh, so to do that, what you do is you take your, your actual photo here and you duplicate it or copy it. So we're going to just copy it. We're going to hit control C and uh, we're going to go inside of our power clip again and we're going to hit control V or paste. Okay. Now we select that photo and uh, we use our transparency tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit subtract. Oops, not different, subtract. There you go. And uh, it's looking a little dark. So the way we fix that is we go to bitmap, image adjustment lab, and we crank our brightness up big time. And then we crank our contrast up big time. And we might need to adjust this a little bit. So we get it kind of, we want this to be really white and we want our, just our lines and maybe a few of the shadows to, to show up. So you kind of play around with it until you get something you like and you hit okay. See, that's looking a lot better. Um, now you can do the same thing with highlights. So you can take that same photo. So I still have, I copied that photo a while ago, so it's still uh, in my memory, and I can just hit paste again. So paste it another photo. Um, and I'm going to go to our transparency tool. And this time I'm going to do add. And uh, then you go to bitmap image adjustment lab. And now this time what I want to do is make it really dark. And I want to focus on just my highlights. I'll even take the saturation out altogether. So just black and white photo. And then you hit OK. And we can probably darken that up even more. So you just kind of play around with it until you get something you like. And so now we're getting to looking a little bit more like a real van. Maybe we hit. And there you go. So, you know, with some fine tuning and extra work, you know, you'd, you'd end up with something like this. So realistic looking sketch. Um, we don't do this a lot for our clients. It, mainly when we do something like this, it's so that, uh, you know, it's a project that we didn't create in house, but we designed it. Um, and we want to be able to use it on our website or uh, it might be a good thing to, to put in a magazine article. Or, you know, if it's really high end client that you're really trying to impress, um, going this extra mile uh, might be helpful for uh, securing that job. So, um, it's just kind of a nice little uh, uh, trick for, for getting these realistic photos. And so one more thing I wanted to show you guys, um, a new feature to X7 is uh, um, QR codes. And QR codes is, is a nice little element that you can incorporate into something like vehicle graphics uh, because it's not... Uh, it's not something that would really compete too much with what you got going on here. And you don't have to have it, you know, extremely large on the side of a vehicle. You can hide it in places and, and uh, you know, people that uh, do like searching out QR codes could uh, potentially, um, uh, you know, use it to, to find out more. You know, it could link to the website of that company or... Uh, it could do a lot of different things, but uh, usually QR codes, in my opinion, work best for like package design, things like that, but uh, something that somebody can hold in their hands. Um, but every once in a while, outdoor signage, uh, vehicle graphics uh, is a nice little place to, to put something like a QR code. So to do that, you go to Object and Insert QR Code. And it's really that easy. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to put the QR code in the center of your your main page here. And so you can move it. And uh, when, you, when you have your QR code, uh, let, me, let me bring it over here to this because this, we'll deal with it on a flat surface here. 
Um, when you have a QR code, uh, by default, it's going to, I think, send you to Corel, Corel's website. Uh, but what you do is you go to your object properties and you type in a new address. So I'll put it on our website. And then you could, uh, you know, change things like the fill color and the background color, things like that. I'll just leave it white and black. Um, if you hit validate, uh, it will test your code. Uh, see, there it goes. Uh, and if you're not satisfied with that, you could actually, you know, pull out your cell phone and, and test it. Just point at your screen. That usually works too. Um, but, you know, I might put a QR code somewhere like that next to the license plate. Uh, so that's a nice little feature that's new to new to Corel Draw, and I thought I'd uh, show you guys that. At the end of the day, uh, everything that we do here is it, when, when we create a brand, we try to uh, create an entire, you know, brand isn't just a logo. It's, you know, a logo used throughout the uh, promotion of that business. So, you know, we start with a logo. We've got variations of the logo. We do polo shirts and business cards. And so a wrap is a, a good part of that brand. And if you can sell an entire package to your client, um, you know, you'll you'll have a customer for life. So um, that's what we're trying to do here. And uh, this is uh, this is what I do to uh, to create uh, wrap graphics. I uh, hope you enjoyed the the webinar and uh, just leave some comments below if you have any questions and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Thanks.